Good evening. An Edmonton sex offender who removed his electronic monitoring bracelet here in Lloydminster has pleaded guilty on separate charges in a Seattle courtroom this morning. Now, according to a Seattle newspaper, Michael Sean Stanley pleaded guilty to misdemeanor charges of harassment and resisting arrest. The 48 year old was sentenced to seven months in jail with credit for time served since his arrest in October. Stanley was the subject of a Canada wide manhunt for a few days last fall. He was able to enter the United States. Now, Canada did not seek his extradition. As part of condition to stay in the States, he had to register as a sex offender. Stanley is also facing an accusation of sexually assaulting a teen in Seattle, and that allegation is still under investigation. Scotiabank's Hockey Day in Canada's opening reception gets underway in only a couple of hours. And for hockey fans, there are plenty of things to see and do at this year's celebrations. Bar Patty Asset gives us a sneak peek at some of the more interactive displays hockey fans around the city will get to try out. Yeah. Peter Delisle is getting a practice round in at the Top Shot area. He's testing out all of the games before the Alberta building opens up to the public. It's one of our games that we manufacture. Uh, it gives a kid an opportunity to talk, knock out uh, nine targets and uh, get to see how fast they can do that in. So that's usually our big attraction. And their accuracy is only one of the things that hockey fans will be able to test. The exhibition is hosting nine games throughout the week. From trying your luck as a play-by-play -play announcer to seeing who has the hardest shot. You can even get an opportunity to get in between the virtual pipes. Have you ever wanted to be an NHL goaltender? Well, now here's your chance. With this interactive game, it'll make you feel like you're right in the action. And if the games aren't your style, there's plenty of hockey history on display, thanks to the Hockey Hall of Fame. Uh, we have hometown hockey, we have original six, we have uh, world championships, Olympics, uh, women's hockey, hometown heroes, whatever we can, uh, whatever we have in the Hall of Fame, uh, that we're able to bring in and show the fans of, uh, of uh, Lloyd Minster. And even though the cup isn't in a border city yet, there's still plenty of hockey hardware to check out. I believe with the trophies you can get up fairly close to and get your photo with uh, one of your favorite trophies. Uh, a lot of famous uh, historical names on these trophies such as Wayne Gretzky and the Gordie Howes and some future stars I guess and current stars such as Steven Stamkos and uh, Ovechkins and the Crosbys. And at the end of the day, Delisle says there's something for everyone. Kids are hockey guys. They're going to come here and they're going to love it. They're going to grab it. They'll recognize some games. They'll try their hardest shot. They'll try their accuracy. And the guys that aren't hockey, they'll still get to, they'll see something that they can do. Bart Pidiasek, Newcap News. Again, the opening reception at the Lloyd Exhibition is open to the public and starts at 7 p.m. And of course, with Scotiabank's Hockey Day in Canada here in Lloyd Minster, it'll be, a much it'll be much busier as many from out of town will be spending time here. And Kanave takes a look at how this will affect local businesses and the economy. What dates, please? Booked, solid. Those are the words of the week for this local hotel. Pretty much sold out. We've just got a, a few uh, here and there, so it definitely will be a sold out uh, week for us here. Ward Reed from the Economic Development Corporation says the immediate effects of an event like this will benefit the local businesses, but they hope it will also shine a spotlight on the city in the long run. Uh, raising our profile for future event hosting, and uh, and that to me is uh, providing a, a big sort of a, a potential long-term gain, and, and we want this as a strong, uh, strong industry for our community, and having uh, national exposure for this time period and, and with this level uh, should, should do, do nothing more but to, uh, you know, raise people's awareness and, and the potential for them to host their events here in our community. As far as dollar amounts, he says it's hard to estimate what this week will bring in but they will be assessing the numbers after the event. What we're going to focus on is this five days of the actual event. We'll, we'll have, of course, the, the operations budget, uh, some estimates of visitor uh, expenditures, and we'll uh, put that through a proven methodology through some partners of ours to, uh, uh, to name an estimate of what the actual dollars. They don't have five rooms available going straight through. And for the day's hotel, Sonia Cuthbert says, Hockey is a big market for them during the winter season, and she's not surprised at how full they are now. Definitely for this week. I mean, we definitely would not have been sold out, I do not believe, if it hadn't been for this event. Um, but again, it's all based because of how much hockey is in Lloydminster. 
um, you know, and, and again, the hotel definitely is doing very well because of this event. And whether or not you're able to take part in the week's activities, it will be a busier time for Lloyd Minster. All the action starts tonight here at the Exhibition Grounds at 7 p.m. I'm Anna Knopfate, Newcap News. Five RCMP detachments in Saskatchewan are getting their own Facebook and Twitter accounts in an effort to connect more with their communities. Now that also includes Onion Lake. Sergeant Craig Cleary with the Saskatchewan RCMP says the detachments will be able to use their accounts to share more specific information with communities such as local collisions or a fraud in the area. Now you can find Onion Lake's detachment under the Twitter handle at RCMP Onion Lake. On this week's pet project, Jenny from the SBCA introduces us to a cat and a kitten and a Yorkshire Terrier pug cross named Cujo, but he's not like the dog from Stephen King's book. Now all three pets are looking to be adopted for good. Sit. <gasps> good boy. Meet Cujo. Cujo is a four-year-old male Yorkshire Terrier pug cross. He's neutered, current on vaccinations, and he'll be microchipped at the time of adoption. He definitely considers himself to be a bit of a lap dog. Cujo loves to be comfortable. He loves being in his big comfy dog bed in his kennel. If you think that Cujo would be the perfect new addition to your family, come on down and meet him at the SPCA. This is Stubbs. Stubbs is a one and a half year old male. He's current on vaccinations, neutered, microchipped, and he's also tattooed. If you're looking for a cat to keep you company, Stubbs is definitely the cat for you. He loves to be around people and he's a little bit of a chatterbox, always having something to say. Stubbs loves to be picked up and carried around. The closer he is to you, the happier he is. He's also very social with other cats. We currently have him in a cat condo. Stubbs loves to visit, so come on down to the SPCA and say hello. This is Garrett. Garrett is a three-month-old male kitten. He's current on vaccinations, not yet neutered, and he'll be microchipped at the time of adoption. If you're looking for a cute little kitten who's dependent on love and cuddles, Garrett's the kitten for you. When Garrett first came into the SPCA, he came in with his two sisters who have since been adopted. Garrett's missing them, so he tries to get as much love and attention anywhere he can. As Soon as you pick him up, he starts purring and kneading. He does get a little bit adventurous, wanting to climb all over your shoulders. He also likes to play with toys and run to burn energy. If you're looking for a cute little kitten to be part of your family, come on down to the SPCA and meet Garrett. 